some people uh, were asking like, is it uh, is it playable? The stone wall, like basically, what do you do against this? Now this has happened a few times before, um, so it's not the first time that we're seeing this right now. But uh, I think it's always good to see somebody play a King's Indian type of setup because if you think about it logically, it's the one that makes the most sense. White is like using all his firepower to try to play knight e5. Yeah, let me go ahead and just play an opening that doesn't let you do that. Why not, right? And why am I not terribly interested in taking? I think it more has to do with the fact that takes, 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 everybody takes. Even if I win a pawn, the knight shows up on g4 and I'm going to lose the e5 pawn. Okay, he plays knight g4 anyway. That just goes to show. It would never have really been winning a pawn, unfortunately. All right, e3 is threatened. Slight issue here. I'm looking at knight c4. That's easily the first thing on my mind. When you know, when you see t6, you know your opponent might be good. Honestly, not untrue. And you can see what a, I mean, it's just a madness, game of madness right now. All right, knight here, b5, or knight b3, or b4. You know, we only have so many moves. I'm, you know, pretty okay with a move like b4. Probably gonna end up choosing something like that because here and, and d5 doesn't feel great to do, so. Let me go defend that thing. Bishop e4 should also be a consideration, but something about bishop e4 feels too sweaty. Bishop here takes, takes. That's really what uh, what he should be looking out for. You can see how this doesn't look anything. I mean. This is where you're playing a stone wall and you're like, uh, oh, what am I missing? What's happening here? The knight's not getting any e5. The knight on g4, like, you know, what the heck? Okay, well, I will take the material. I'm gonna open up the F file. I definitely don't want to take again, right? This I want to keep this uh, structure solido, solido. Um, knight here on takes is a little, a little not good. Bishop d5 is definitely getting some of my attention. The knight f6 is basically the next move, and it's not really a big answer to it. I think we need to kick this knight out. Hey, Drew. Wow. That's an unfortunate blunder. Fortunate blunder there. Jeez, he's non-stop with these moves, isn't he? He's actually down a lot of material, but you can't really tell because my extra material is kind of sitting over here. Stopping knight f7. 
by preparing to give up more material, of course. There's one thing that can't be underestimated here, which is the fact that Knight G4 may appear on the board quick as a flash. Knight F6, Knight takes G4, so we do need to be mindful of that. It's not the easiest thing to prevent. I'm gonna bring my queen over immediately. Like, no matter where I move this knight, I feel like his intention is that. Okay, hang on a sec. Check? I don't think you can do this, my friend. I don't think you can do that. I mean, if you take, I'm jumping in looking to meet you. Check. Check. Little puzzle rush for you, buddy guy. Hit him with the puzzle rush. That's why you'd be practicing those tactics. Knight f7 and, you know, there's a lot of very tempting knight moves here, but none of them are even close to as good as knight e5. None of them. Knight e5 to take here is a little counterintuitive, but knight h6 doesn't do anything. Doesn't help us out. Isn't this funny based on our discussion? To be playing this username? Michael Bissonette. All right, let's go here. Bishop d3. Well, when he's threatening this, I think you guys know we have to do that. c3, knight d2, castle. There's no knight that can join the e4 square just yet. So, you know, I'm okay. Hmm. Well, I'm looking at this, 95, might be a 95 angle. What do we want to do here? An important question. I guess I'll castle. I really wanted to play knight e5 straight away, but I think castling is smarter. Knight g6. You know, knight g6 probably not the right move. I mean, I'll throw a 95. This is very standard. Now I see a knight trying to get in here, but more importantly, I also see that checks are not easy to meet. Like, he's going to have to move his king. Is it worth it just to get him to move his king? I'll say yes and give him the check. We made him move the king, yay. Big achievement. We're 
very, very happy with that. But in doing so, we've obviously displaced the bishop. So the next move might be a little different than usual. Let's keep going with the G pawn. Okay, let's kick my bishop out. I still like G4, G5 here. Hello, Eddie, the endgame magician. Okay, what's going on here? an impressive move. Hmm. Might throw in G4 afterwards. That's not the way you wanted to take that. If you had a choice. E7. I mean, we want a clean pawn here. One pawn. That's what we got out of all that. Yay. <laughs> A singular pawn. I'm trying to leave my bishop here because I think it's very annoying for the, the king, but obviously he's very against that. I'll play a4 though. Try to open things up a tad. That's a odd move. Check. If you go anywhere here, you're going to lose that bishop. You can't go there. If you go here, you lose that bishop. If you go to the only remaining square, you're going to lose that bishop anyway. Bishop is loose. Rook can't go here or here, which are the only two seriously dangerous invasion squares. This one may even, or sorry, this one may even be kind of nice for me to simplify. And there we go. That is very helpful. Now we have C4. We 
start with this. And of course, we must attempt. Lose on time again? No. You have that little faith in me? Come on now. Ye of little faith. Can't be messing up two times in the same stream. We only get one mulligan around here. Pretty successful Stonewall, I would say, because we won a pawn pretty early. We made him not castle, and, you know, we didn't have to deal with the knight on e4. By the time he got it there, he wasn't castle. There were a lot of things wrong with his position. All right, we go e3, bishop d3. C5, always C3, and next move, F4. Okay, here we go. He's hitting our pawn. Again, we don't have time to play knight F3. So I usually play G3. I could go knight F3 here, but it doesn't feel right. Let's go G3. You never really want to take that square from that knight. It doesn't make sense. Knight e5, I'm going to be losing a pawn because of the queen there, right? So let's be careful with that. Let's move this king out of the way. Now knight e5 is coming. Hello to Asios, 34 month resub. Welcome back, Asios. Yes, boys. We are crushing with the stone wall today. That's the theme. I think it's uh I think it's a G4, G5 angle here. I was hoping he wouldn't play this one. All right. All right, all right. Mm, I don't think so, my friend. Maybe we'll get a brilliant. Surely we get a brilliancy for this one, right? We must get a brilliancy for this one. Brilliancy, right? 
I'm only gonna play it if you guys think I'm gonna get a brilliancy. Otherwise, we should probably refrain. But this has got to be, without question, a double exclamation mark in the chess.com game review. There's no way it's not. Are you guys locking in your answers? Brilliancy confirmed? There's no way it isn't, right? It's a bishop sack. It's on h7. I mean, why the hell not? Check. This one is cute. It works. It's it's the easy one. But if I push this one first, it's a possibility he plays king h6 and allows f5 checkmate. So obviously, we take the pawn. Obviously. Higher EV. confirm our suspicions brilliancy yes or no lock in your answers i'm going with an obvious yes has to be has to be a brilliancy who says no bunglet says no dr lord mayo says no guess what you bastards Brilliancy confirmed! Dr. Lord Mayo says it's not that move. Dr. Lord Mayo? Survey says? It was that move. That's right, big bishop h7 for Asios. G6 check, definitely the right move. Much better than queen h5. Much better. G6 check. You see, the engine shows preference for g6. The engine is sadistic as well. It also wants a pawn checkmate. And it understands that g6 allows for king h8 and king h6. And both of those moves get brutally checkmated. Queen h5 forces king g8. So the engine understands g6 leaves more room for error. Very impressive. X magna x, five gifted subs. I think you said you were gifting them if it wasn't a brilliancy. But hey, I'm not one to shy away from a compliment. Thank you very, very much. Let's go d4. Ooh, interesting, because this move actually threatens e5. So I think I'm going to have to play f4 here. <laughs> it's like, only move. Oh my goodness, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> what? F6? You gotta be joking me. I mean, what are these guys up to? F6. I mean, D5 is absolutely crushing here. What am I <laughs> what am I doing here, you know? Alright. I'll play ball. I'm preventing you from going there. Or so it would say, oh, look at this guy. Makes me sick. 
He only wants E5, and it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Oh my. Ugh. We're not letting it happen. There is no shot. There's no shot I am allowing E5. Hell no, brother. Hell no. This game is going to be the stone wall, but it's going to be a little different. It's going to be about preventing that move. We can't, we just can't allow it. There's no way. Forget about E5, buddy. It's not happening. D4, F4, and Knight E5. We all know how strong that is, right? The unassailable Knight on E5. Supported by two pawns. However, I admit that there's something I haven't shared with you, which is a much stronger version of that stone wall. And that is this stone wall. Pawns on f5 and d5 with the knight on e6. This is the stone wall that she told you not to worry about. This is the one that really hurts. I'm not the man you want. You've made a mistake. C4. Oh, he's desperate. It's sickening. He's desperate to get some pieces moved. Well, let's play B4. We all know that this is forced, right? And then I'll play E4. I mean, who knows what I'm up to here. And it's all for a very specific reason. Now that his pawn is here, surely he doesn't see what's coming. He can only see forward, like a dog with a cone on. Queen there. Very, very good move from my opponent. Didn't think he had it in him. Honestly, I, I mean it. Didn't think he had it in him. Color me impressed, as they say. Color me impressed. I'd still like to check him, right? I I don't see why not. Um, knight here, b2. I mean, it could be better. Rook b1 takes, you know. The thing is, this is not really a, a knockout until I also control that square. So I can't really be putting all my eggs in the bishop b5 check basket. Not yet. Not yet. When Dr. Lord Mayonnaise suggests a brain dead move, or suggests a good move, you know the position is brain dead winning. Factual. Check. Are we blown away by this move? I mean, he almost at some point wants to play this. It must be... Hmm. Must be knight c3. We have to... We have to just go. Go for what we 
believe in. go here right away I think it might be this angle it's very close it's hard to say which one's better maybe going against my instinct here but let's do it because we see the end of the tunnel we see the end of the tunnel it's there it exists just need to bring make it a reality Guy's the strongest player I've ever seen in my life. Oh. There was always a hope. There was always a hope. He couldn't check me, guys. It would have been a draw. We, this was a, just a draw. We know, we know. Would have been a draw. He didn't want to draw. He was playing for the win. Look how much material he was up. Guys, in this position, after King D3, the best result is a draw. Knight F2 check. He has nothing better than a draw. Very suspicious play. There were many mates. Some mates I didn't see. Some mates I didn't play because I was pre-moving. But hopefully it was at least clear what we were going for, right? We we wanted, for example, something like knight c4, rook here, knight e5 to get rid of our bishop. We would want something like this, rook a7, right? This is the dream. Takes, takes, and oh, mouse slip, mate. That's the dream, really. What I should be doing to make sure it's in fact mate is go like this. Right? So many, many mates. However, uh, he was finding good moves. Okay. And when I say good moves, I don't necessarily mean the best moves, but moves that were kind of preventing my plans. I go rook here. He takes and I take on a8. Rook takes c4. Now, when I played it, I admit, I didn't see this mate. I was a little concerned about this. I thought after rook takes on f2, my mate isn't there anymore. However, it is still there. It's on c8. So this was a miss. Not because we didn't see this, but because I thought, oh, if I lose my dark square bishop, I'm dead. However, rook here, we could move the king. As long as we don't move it to a check, Right? So here, here, and here, bad squares. Bad squares. Right? King e3, bad square. King here, king here, only moves. Imagine you play this and it's a brilliancy. 
But then you play a dumb move like one of these ones. And then black takes it in. Your dreams are over. Or king e3. Oops. So, as long as you play this, it should be mate. The rook c8 wasn't on my red. I wasn't looking at a rook c8 mate. Now here, should also be mates here. There really should. But I definitely was not noticing them. Here, of course we have a draw, but we want more than that. Again, mate idea missed. Bishop a6, what a surprising checkmate. Because his goddamn bishop is stuck. Again, amazing. Bishop a6 for me. There were so many ideas. And here, obviously I didn't see him play this move. I was pre-moving. But, if he goes there, of course bishop b6 is an easy mate. But we pre-moved. And then here, I maybe should have expected that he would play um, knight b7. But we didn't. And although king here and king here make a little bit of sense, and king here would have walked into knight c5, boom, don't lose hope. Keep playing the game. Keep your stick on the ice. And in this position, it is actually 0.00. Black's only option is to give a check. Only option is to give a check. Only option is to give a check. But he didn't want that. He wanted to play for a win. I had 0.3 seconds. Easy win for him. Oops. Do not underestimate him on Hamilton. Next game, e4. Oh, he moved, bro. All right, we're gonna hit him with f5. Mm hmm. Bishop here, of course, c6. Very important to guard that. Our favorite, Queen E8, sliding out of the pin, which they never seem to understand. Surprisingly uh, interesting move from my opponent, because I would say it's actually a good move, but I think he didn't play it because it was... <laughs> I, didn't, I don't think he played it for the right reasons, but I think it was a, a great move. Let's take. Hmm. How to proceed with this beautiful position? <laughs> so good. Well, I'm definitely looking at this one, surprisingly. Queen c8. Rook f5 as well. I think I want to avoid things like this, which is why I'm pausing for the moment. Rook f5, obviously, Dr. Lord Mayonnaise. Really? Rook f5. Do you think that's obvious? This is Dr. Lord Mayonnaise's recommendation. Rook to f5. Rook f5 and knight d7. Big moves from DLM here. Okay. I'm following in your footsteps here. I'm tailing your bet. I'm tailing your bet. Knight d7. The recommendation from DLM. I can see this happening. Okay, h4, not quite. Queen here, I'm liking the vibe of queen here. 
Maybe knight f6. I'll calculate, not you. I'm going to play queen e6 for you, Dr. Lord Mayonnaise. This is a special move designed for you, DLM. Just for you. This has your name on it. Because if h5 takes, my queen hangs, and pawn takes naturally is illegal. So h5 suddenly looks like a tremendous move. Queen e6 walking in to h5. A concerning move to be sure. However, that's why this move right here, Dr. Lord, was for you. There you go, buddy. Surely we are going to get a double X claim for that. However, I'm not going to jump to conclusions. What do we think? Is that double X glam worthy? Are we going to get credit for that? Or is it going to be the best move? This move would be nice. Less nice. We're not threatening mate there, unfortunately. I mean, it looks great and all, but no threats. No threats. Maybe this is a big brain calculation move. Queen F6. I was hoping he would play that. Now, to test our... <laughs> test our metal here. I have a pass pawn. And I also have a pass pawn here. Go pawns, go me. Push him, baby. Ooh. All right, brilliancy or not? You guys are saying no brilliancy? Rook takes e5? I'm saying brilliancy. Surely it is. I'm going yes. Lock in your answers. 0 0.5 brilliancy is higher or lower. This brilliancy check brought to you by Underdog. Who is locking in higher than 0 0.5 and who is locking in lower? All right. Great move. Excellent move. And now the moment in question. Exclamation mark underdog is bringing us this brilliancy check. It's a brilliancy. The higher than 0 0.5 hits. It was a brilliancy. What a beautiful, beautiful move. Dragon Dog. All right, we got D4 from him. 
E3, I think he could be one of us. Something tells me he's one of us. Aha! Uh -huh. Indeed he is. Very interesting. That's funny, because that's what I was doing. All right, brah. I'm going to take you. You're going to take back, but I have got the F file. Surely, that has to be worth something. I don't know how much, but it's got to be worth something. You can't castle, buddy. I mean, this has to be useful for me. I think I want to put my bishop over here. Really living on the edge here. He does have this, but... Eh, shaky, shaky. Bring a rook over. Bring a knight in now. Bishop here fails, unfortunately, to knight c2. Bishop on a6 is causing a lot of problems, I think. Knight c2 also uh, has the idea that it hits that pawn, too. Feels we've encountered one of our students. Our students of the game. Hmm... Knight here, knight here. Still, this move doesn't work. But if I play rook f8, then all of a sudden it's playable. So, I'm going to go here. Closing this diagonal, maybe intending rook f8. If we ever take, it opens up the bishop, so I'm not too interested in doing that. Let's go here. Guarding this pawn. Our positions are identical, except his knight's not there, right? So there's a few reasons why my position is superior. Knight's better than his knight, queen's better than his queen, rook's better than his rook. And my bishop's a bit better than his because of the pieces it's aiming at. And now this pawn is under fire. There's rook f2, right? Lots of good stuff there.
Well, this move is definitely the best move. Question is... Do we have even better? And I'm not sure the answer is yes. Of course we take with the rook. What was that? Queen takes f2 was needed. Gotta sack your queen there. Alright, well. Potentially one more game for the elusive 1700. And we get to go for 1700 with the white pieces. Let's go e3 and we actually finally see somebody not play e6 like how many people have been playing this it's kind of crazy this move is so much better right you want to immediately get ready to trade this doesn't trap the bishop but it's close Castle, knight here. I mean, this is nice and simple, but this is nice and tempting. Here, in order to take the bishop, I mean, yeah, that's, that looks pretty dang good. Anytime this is a threat, I mean, it's pretty much, pretty much get castled immediately territory. Hmm. which is interesting considering g4 is fresh on my mind queen f3 or g4 both look tempting to say the least i think very much in the spirit of the opening is g4 this is what the opening wants to be remembered by moves like g4 Not saying it's better, but it's how the opening wants to be played. Aggressive, sack everything. Not a fan of allowing queen g5 check, which is why we're going to take with this pawn. This knight is also, I mean, can be taken next. And we're going to have a nasty bishop pair that I'm looking to use. King takes queen h4 check. Again, not a big fan of allowing it, so we'll give this check. So now, this diagonal could be useful for me. four it stops knight c5 and even if he goes like one of these pawn moves i think i just want to play bishop b2 so it's like a 
I'm using this just to save me one single move so I can play this. My pieces are all starting to say hello to the king. I do not want to go here and just like take the rook. That's definitely not my agenda here. I'm thinking more of a F5 kind of move. Question is F5, Rook F1. You know, which which moves do we want to do first? Rook F1 is really uh, screaming to be played. Well, I'm pretty much looking at F5 here. Just one of these moves that I think we're, we might just have to play. Might just have to go for. I mean, it feels right. All in, I mean, just chips in the middle, you know? Go, go, go. All right, what do I got here? Takes g6 check or e6. Pretty much two moves. E6, king e7. Not sure we're getting that much out of it. So I I think we probably need to take on g6 and just full commit. Check. Remember, I mean th this and takes there is it's just not gonna be enough, you know? Somehow I need to involve all my pieces here. Hmm. Let's, ooh, I'm thinking about this. Oh, queen e3 is not the only move on the table here. Ah. Queen e5. All right. We're going to have to play a... Uh... <laughs> going to have to play a funny looking endgame. It's funny because we're down a rook. Don't see any way to not trade the queens there, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be relying on <laughs> bad moves on bad moves here. We were all in. But I don't think I I don't think I really ever saw anything. Let's uh, move our king up the board, I suppose. This looks like the most intelligent way to proceed. I guess we'll go here. I'm not sure which way is trickier. I mean, either way, I think he's kind of going there, so I don't think we're... Uh... I don't think we're tricking him in any way, in any capacity. Oh, let's make sure to give up the pawn. Follow our own habits. All right. How could we possibly... All right, I gave it the old college try. Can't be too upset. Damn it. 
GG. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Um, was it really working? Again, I don't think so. But it looked like fun. Um, I wonder if F5 immediately was, was better. Because B4, love White's position. Bishop B2, love White's position. E6, never the plan. I think F5 maybe right away. Like, I like this move, but... After rook takes here, I wasn't liking this. And you know what? After rook takes a2, I think it was e6. The reason I didn't like this because I thought the king could run. But I just noticed the queen covering that square. If I can play f5, keep the king in the middle, and open up the lines, this could have been the nasty knockout that was needed. e6 check, and then f5. Because f5, I mean, to be honest, I didn't see this. But... This is just not that uh, not that convincing. I just don't see much better. Like here, you know, as soon as I allow him to start checking me, I don't have anything better than a draw at the most. Queen c7, there's always a rook here, as well as many checks. Wasn't liking that. So I think as soon as he played queen g5, I was like, eh, don't really like this. But it looks like this was a rook f1 was a good move. Rook f1 was good, and we just needed that. e6 and f5, that would have been fun. Why not e6 and take h8? Because I'm not getting anything there, right? I'm still down a ton of pawns. Let's remember, I only have four pawns left. You're not going to win chess games if you don't have pawns on the board. Seriously. So, I think the, the miss was e6 and f5. I, I forgot that the king couldn't run. That's what I missed. I totally forgot about that. Because otherwise, you know, takes, takes. Where's this king going? He's got to go here. And then, well, there's some real ideas here. Can move this bishop. King's just stuck in the middle here. At least there's some, some chances. Thought he defended really well. Um, but I was not without a winning position, I think. Yeah, as I said, g4, very much in the spirit of the position. If I'm looking for a more tempered move, it would have been queen f3, because then he's forced to take me, and I could take back. And if he took, I would probably take with the pawn, and something like f5. Yeah, I don't think we had any real ideas, Lolly. I think he was one step, maybe not one step ahead of us, but he was always matching, equal footing. Holding serve is a good way to put it. Like, we make a threat, he comes up the defense. Why not save the bishop? I don't have time, unfortunately. If I go here, where do I save the bishop? If I move it somewhere, he's just going to sack for it. And I don't want to have that threat looming in every position. I need the bishop or I need the speed to attack. I can't really have both. It'd be great if I could just not have to deal with rook a2 and just have the bishop and an extra move. But he takes on a2, hits my bishop, kind of have to react, unfortunately. Um, yeah, this position is not that great for black, but like I said, what did it take? Like us being 1700 to finally, I mean, we've seen this before, but not that much. Someone to finally play Bishop F5. I mean, guys, everybody has been playing E6. And when you lock that Bishop in, the stone wall is like 10 times more effective. Truly. So... It's refreshing to see someone finally play this. Now, we still get a normal um, stone wall, but it is weird that people, for some reason, are not playing bishop f5. For some reason. But that's the good thing about the, uh, the stone wall. I mean, it starts very innocuous. It actually has some poison to it. Sky Shore 1. Hey, look at the friendly white pieces again. Thank you, chess.com. Appreciate that, bud. And we might see, I have a feeling we might see this again. It's like, where are the people that play King's Indian? Do they just not exist? Because King's Indian, I feel like, is a perfect remedy against this. But also just common. Like, I thought that, I thought that was a very popular opening. 
Right here, I'll probably go between e1. h5 feels like uh, a little much. Let's boot out the knight. And again, I always say this, but if, if people are controlling e5, they're probably not controlling e4. So it's time to time to push. If I can't put my knight on e5, I probably want to put a pawn. E6. Why does E6 look so good? Because of that pawn. This pawn should be on H7. It should really be on H7. Oh no. Here. We're not meeting him just yet so we're gonna have to go here if knight here then a knight appears on f6 we don't want a knight appearing on f6 however what we do want is we do want a smothered mate now queen takes h5 brilliant move because if the king goes there we have bishop h7 and this nice pattern so queen here actually forces a mate but i think knight here is a little bit more cruel because it makes him think that he can run away here. And of course, that's not the case. Of course, we still made it, but with the knight, much nastier. I know, last time was really good. I'm gonna play it again. I'm in a good mood, so I'll give you guys the set at our next sub goal. GG, uh, this was a question game, but yeah, when people play King's Indian setups against you in the Stonewall, most of the time you have to understand you're gonna have to play for E4 because you can't leave your pawns like this forever. Your knight can never use E5, so. Uh, makes sense at some point, you're gonna have to push your pawns. But yeah, this H5 was really bad by him and now, now he's just made it. Nasty. All right. Will we get a takes on d5? I have a feeling we might see an e5, but if we see d4, it's more likely. If we see knight f3, I think we're getting an exchange. F5. Always a surprise. I mean, it's a very strange move. <laughs> very strange. Hmm. We need to. This is like the anti me wanting to keep the queens on move. But to be honest, I mean, the queens off the board is not really uh not really an issue i can still put a knight there so let's do it let's dream of uh a knight on e4 i think we can still make it happen okay so how do we get there very simple knight has to be there we know that for a fact there's no f6 square so how does it get here that's what we need to figure out how does it get there Probably this way. Here, 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 here. I mean, I know it's a long plan. It really is. But if he doesn't know what I'm up to, and he doesn't make any threats himself, like, I don't know, just, first of all, that's kind of a threat. We need to move out of the way. But if he doesn't stop that, that idea, it's going to be really nasty once it gets there. Why do I want it on e4? Come on, really? You're asking me that? Bishop h5 is definitely annoying. Yeah. 
I'm not that concerned though. I was actually more concerned about a bishop going to d3. Here, uh, I don't think my pawn's in danger, which is a good thing. So, take the small victories. Knight c8 next, and bishop, knight, and knight. If he attacks this pawn, that's annoying. But I don't see an easy way he can do it. I also can get to that square by c4. And c4 could be good because it looks like I'm threatening something else. You know? Like, maybe I'm doing something aggressive. But actually, I'm really just ready to drop it back. So, plan is bishop here. And then knight here, knight here, knight here. Go my plan. You'll see if I can ever get my knight e4. I promise you, you will understand why. If we can ever get it there. That's a big if. Rook here. Tempting. But knight takes there with mate looks pretty nasty. Let's boot the bishop. But if he plays f3 to kick the knight, well, f3 is going to trap his knight on the side of the board. So I don't think he's going to be too interested in playing that. See, I want to bring this back. But for the moment, if I do that, I'm a little concerned about rook e7. That's something I need to be concerned about. Don't be concerned. Well, I like knight c4 better. He can't play b3, so knight here is kind of pleasant. Don't. I mean, my position would be really bad if I didn't have this plan. You'll notice that the only reason I have any clue what to do every single move is because I have a plan in mind. If I didn't have this plan, I would be kind of, <laughs> kind of clueless, honestly. Oof, great set here. Okay, kind of expected that move. And hey, it's pretty good as well. It's pretty good. Now if we move this, rook e7 is the move I'm not thrilled to deal with. F4. Well, Eddie, I'm very attached to this idea of a knight on e4, so that's why I'm holding strong here. All right, it's happening. It's finally happening. We've done it. We've finally reached 
the e4 square. Wow. It feels great to be here. It feels amazing. The stone wall. Move 24. Move 23 to be precise. We finally got the knight d4. Woo. <laughs> and move 26. It looks like he's planning to kick it out. Okay, well, it was great. Nice being here. Appreciate everybody. <laughs> this was fun. Bishop's not too happy now, is it? That is a pretty bad piece. I think we're... I think we've gained the upper hand here. It was all worth it for the bad bishop on h1. Ah, what, a, what a mistake it is to have such a piece. be nicer to probably have the bishop there and take here you know it, like this is kind of the way that i'm supposed to do it it's like oops the pawn is loose he's not taking the pawn for some reason we'll have to force him to take it there we go <laughs> what are the chances he has rook c1 <laughs> that was my beautiful trap. <laughs> uh, I worked so hard for that. My blood, sweat, and tears went into trapping that piece. <laughs> 1700 one way or another. Wow, what a great game. We spent, like I said, how long? 23 moves. 23 moves getting our knight to e4. And by the time it got there, it was evicted in about three. And then we proceeded to be outplayed for the rest of the game and won on time. There we go. Honestly, I feel like a 1700. Having just done that, I feel I, this feels right, actually. I do feel like a 1700. Wow, look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another Stonewall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also, click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.